All right, so let's go ahead and move move forward with a call to order. And uh, we have Gina to take attendance. Okay. All right, um, Soriano. Present. Neferud. Present. Jones. Uh, here. Newton. I am here. Cummins. Here. Davis. Present. And Kolka. Here. All right, our next item is business from the public. Can anyone uh, share anything with business from the public yet? Submit anything? No, nothing to share. All right, let's move forward for our next item on our agenda. Um, and that is, I believe we have uh, our approval of our May 24th meeting minutes. I was not here. Mm -hmm. um, apologies for that, I was out sick. I know that Miriam also, oh, do we actually, we did, a, we did a quorum outside of Miriam and myself, whole thing missing. So Kim, thank you so much for leading that meeting. Uh, for those that were in attendance, do we have a approval for the meeting minutes? I move to approve the minutes from May 24th, 2022. I second that. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, let's go ahead and mark those as approved. Our next item on our agenda, um, is our scheduled business. We have a guest speaker, executive director, Jason Dorsett, who is from the Office of Institutional Equity, Diver Diversity and Inclu Inclusion from Luminate Community College. Uh, Jason, are you on the line with us? Yes, I am. Thank you. Fabulous. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, and I wanted to give a huge shout out to Greg for reaching out to me some months ago. Uh, to sort of try to schedule uh, some time with me uh, and you all on this evening. And so thank you, Cam, for squeezing me in. I will be brief uh, and uh, entertain questions, of course, um, and feedbacks and thoughts here at, at the end. So I thought I would kind of start off by sharing a little bit about, about who, who I am. Uh, so again, my name is Jason J. Dorsett. Uh, I am originally from North Carolina, so I'm a Southern boy through and through. Uh, I started my academic journey at a two-year institution in rural North Carolina and later transferred to a four-year uh, university where I received my Bachelor's of Arts in History and Middle Grade Education. Uh, I then moved to Washington, D.C. and taught seventh grade social studies uh, in Southwest D.C. And so shout out to all of the educators out there. The middle school years are the hardest years, let me tell you. Um, I then returned to North Carolina to pursue a master's degree in public policy and administration. Uh, and after receiving that, uh, I uh, worked uh, across several areas of higher education before relocating to Oregon, uh, Corvallis, Oregon in 2014 to serve as the director for the Office of Diversity and Cultural Engagement uh, here in, in Corvallis. And my sole uh, purpose uh, was to help uh, to build the institutional infrastructure and capacity for the expansion and building of new seven standalone facilities, um, our cultural resource centers. I've had opportunity to hire a lot of folk while, while, while at Oregon State University. Uh, and so I really enjoyed that exciting work for about four and a half, five years of, 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 of my professional career. Uh, I then uh, decided to sort of get my feet wet, if you will, a little uh, on the sort of academic affairs side of, of the house. And so I served as a senior associate director for this amazing program called the Education Opportunities Program, which supports marginalized students, women, LGBTQ students, first gen students, students of color, um, as they uh, sort of transition through the four year, four year um, experience college. So now I am six months and a couple of days into my new role as the executive director and chief equity officer. Uh, 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 for institutional equity, diversity, and inclusion here at the best community college in the world, Lynn Bent Community College. Uh, and so within my role, uh, let me just say this, every day is different, uh, but I have spent a great deal of my time um, 
in a lot of meetings, 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 meetings. I've had opportunities to connect with faculty, staff, students, board members, external stakeholders, such as uh, HRC individuals and others um, all throughout our county, state, and in our great nation. So the sole responsibility uh, of, my, of my work um, here at LBCC is to explore uh, our current existing opportunities for scale and or to create new and innovative opportunities for our LBCC community to better enhance our equity, diversity, and inclusion efforts um, across, across the campus. Uh, my philosophy around diversity, equity, and inclusion work is very simple, and it's that everyone, every single person, regardless of whatever difference they may have, deserves the right, the, the right, to live, work, play, and grow in a safe, inclusive, supportive, and welcoming environment. Okay? So uh, what I've been up to specifically for the past six months, again, I've, I've said a few, a few moments ago, a lot of meetings. Um, I have, I carry a, uh, several journals with me. I'm now on my eighth journal, front and back, of just sort of listening and, and writing notes and sort of trying to gather as much historical information and, and really whatever information I, I can. So I spend a lot of time doing that. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, connecting with county leaders, our, our city leaders, both in Albany and Corvallis, Paloma, throughout the entire region, to really learn much more about their, their, their perspectives, specifically as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, work, and, 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 and even hearing from them in terms of like what, what needs to happen and when and why as it relates to DEI work. Um, I've been engaged in a lot of conversations um, with my colleagues, other chief equity officers or chief diversity officers in the uh, community college space across Oregon um, and looking at ways to not only recruit talent um, from marginalized backgrounds, but also how do we retain good talent? How do we retain these individuals from marginalized communities? And what are, and what are the best practices for doing such? Um, I'm also working alongside uh, several uh, amazing colleagues at LBCC um, as we are in the process of designing a, um, a, climate, um, a climate survey, as well as a bias response protocol for the institution. Uh, I serve on the HEC Equity Advisory Council, um, the Higher Education Consor Consortium. I forget what the last C is, but you all know. Uh, so I'm very involved on the, on the, on the on the HEC board, you know, across the state. Um, and so in essence, all I've been working on uh, is looking at ways to, to strategically align LBCC's DNI efforts uh, with others, uh, organizations, um, as we sort of uh, embrace and get excited about the rapid changing demographics across our regions. And last but not least, I will leave you all with this. Um, we at LBCC, we are so excited to um, be in the early stages of, of, um, of applying to become uh, an HSI, a Hispanic Serving Institution. Uh, Hispanic serving institutions, um, this uh, is, is, is around uh, what the, the, the federal government um, has earmarked around $1.9 billion, $2 billion um, uh, to award organizations, institutions, higher education institutions, um, some funds um, if they uh, would like to apply to become an HSI. So we've been actively working um, around that and partnering with a lot of, a lot of community um, organizations. Uh, there are only three other community colleges in our state that have this um, designation of an HSI. Again, that's Hispanic Serving Institution. Oregon State University is also in the process of, of doing the same thing, as well as Warner Pacific University. So yeah, that's, that's in short what I've been up to. Um, and I will entertain any questions if, if, if that's appropriate, Madam Chair, at this time. But again, thank you so much for having me. Questions, thank you. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and... Uh... I have a couple questions, actually. Yeah. Hi, Jason, it's Miriam. Um, hey, Miriam. Hey, so yeah, so I've been um, looking into LBCC and also, um, you know, I, I always like to look at websites, for instance, especially for institutions that want to be an HSI. Um, one thing that I have noticed, and maybe you can help me in understanding this, is sometimes when I go onto the websites, I don't see the option in Spanish. 
And mm -hmm. if I do see it, it's very limited. It's like one section and not the whole website is in Spanish. What are your thoughts on that? Because I'm looking at LBCC right now and it's not very accessible to our community. Absolutely. And thank you for that amazing question. And this is something that President Lisa Avery um, mm -hmm. and our executive leadership team, we're, we're exploring. Um, we, um, I'm not quite sure if, if, if this is totally public as of yet, but um, our executive director for institutional advancement and communication um, has, has recently resigned. Um, however, um, we have been able to um, secure some funding from the federal government by way of, I think it's called, um, oh, what is it, uh, fund, fund Oregon or some type of large grant. And with that large grant, specifically, my office has earmarked $10,000 from, from, from some of those funds uh, to begin to look at the most critical uh, websites and or institutional information to immediately get that information translated to Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, I will soon, Marion, probably be reaching out to you and, and, and others uh, because I am actively going to be looking to contract out Spanish speaking mm -hmm. uh, individuals to help us translate some of our uh, most, most critical, when, when I say critical, I mean for you know, um, community facing information information that students and families of the Latinx community would need. Um, so I will be reaching out to you soon, but we do have 10K coming to hire okay. someone to help us uh, get started. That's I wonderful do. to hear. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, just because like for me, it's like access to information is number one priority in everything that I do. Um, and so especially for helping um, high school students have that option of accessibility, especially when it comes within the Latinx community, having that access to information. Um, oops, sorry, I think Jason, oh, you're back. You're on mute, Jason. It was the Jason. quickest re-sign I've ever seen. It was impressive. I know, you're on mute by the way, Jason. We can't hear you. <laughs> Ah, technology. Okay, okay. Yes, technology. I apologize. I am on actually on my cell phone. I left my laptop oh. in my office. So I'm like multitasking. And someone called my cell phone. And so my oh. host screen is blank. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I'm here. Yes. No, um, like I was saying, I don't know what part you heard, but um, to me, the access to information is very important. Um, and that's why one of the first things like I get asked by families is like, where can I find this information? I want my kid, especially first generation students to be able to be like, where's this information? Um, I wanna present it to my family or maybe the family doesn't speak or like um, read, for instance, even in Spanish, they do need another level of accessibility to be uh -huh. able to provide that information for them. So those are just some things that I'm always, it's always in my mind and how to reach out to the community. Um, and so that's why I'm, I'm excited to hear that you are working with the college with this because to me this is like crucial information um, oh yes indeed absolutely thank you for that question mm -hmm. and yeah, i'm looking it, forward to reaching you reaching out to me <laughs> i know it became a large issue because i believe it was last january google had you know they usually have that automatically translate for each page um mm. they actually depreciated that widget that a lot of websites depended on because it wasn't always accurate. So you could translate any page into any, any language. And so that widget has now been deactivated for over a year now, year about a year and a half. Uh, so yes, excited to see that. Um, so I know that you and Greg were chatting about working somehow on the Unity Walk. Greg, uh, did you have anything or, or Jason? We'd love, we'd love to hear more about this as well. Yeah, so um, um, Greg, are you on? Did you wanna say anything before? I well, first of all, um, thanks for coming on tonight. And that Juneteenth pro, uh, program that we put on was phenomenal. And I want to shout out to Jamie. Jamie and I uh, cleaned up the chairs and the tables, and it was fun to meet someone actually in person from the HRC besides Stephanie. So that was awesome. Yeah. So anyways, that was a good, it was a great day. And um, thanks for putting that on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg, for being there. Thank you all for being there. This was our first uh, Juneteenth celebration in Albany. Uh, and it certainly uh, presented its own set of, of opportunities, I will say. Uh, but all in all, the community, it was probably our most, um, our most uh, successful Juneteenth 
um, since we started, which was seven years ago. Um, but Greg and I initially connected um, around uh, Unity Walk. And so um, back in, I believe it was March or March. April, March, um, we as an institution uh, decided to uh, engage around um, programming really for campus students, faculty and staff around raising the awareness uh, as it relates to sexual assault and violence. And so March is Sexual Assault and Violence Month. And uh, we wanted to host a unity walk to, to physically demonstrate that sexual assault, sexual assault amongst, amongst uh, specifically for women, as well as men, as well as gender non-binary non folk, it, it's, it, it is happening and it, and it exists. Um, and we decided that as an institution, we were just not ready to engage in the physical um, in-person activity. And so we kind of pivoted from that. But next year, Greg, I will be hitting you up and inviting you all to join us. And we want to get the entire city involved as well, so. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. I think it Hello. sounds awesome. Hello, Jason. Hey. Hi, this is Robin Davis. I had a question for you on the diversity and inclusion. Does LBCC offer diversity and inclusion curriculum or classes or certificates? Um, and if, if so, or, or even if not so, is there a repository for information available there at the uh, school, either surveys, uh, studies, you know, stuff that the community can access? Thank you, that's a great question. Um, right now, we do not um, have uh, a sort of standard uh, curriculum, if you will, around um, diversity, equity, and inclusion work. Uh, however, we are building that out. Um, I personally have uh, uh, a lot of, of really relevant and current curriculum um, that will soon be listed on our website. But I want to also name that while you know, words on paper, and especially again, within the context of diversity, equity, and inclusion, from my personal experience and doing this work for at least 15 years, it's better to engage in a dialogue and in conversations versus reading words on paper, right? Um, and so I will certainly, uh, I would welcome an opportunity to certainly connect with, with this group um, and, um, and even, you know, the larger community around some diversity, equity, and inclusion and bias training and workshops. Um, and so please invite me back. I would love that opportunity, actually. I've been following the HRC for quite some time uh, since I lived in Corvallis a while ago. And, and, and I've really been impressed with the great work that this organization um, has been moving forward. But I also see some opportunities uh, for us to do collectively, for us to do things differently. Um, we also have a couple of faculty uh, and staff members uh, at the campus um, that are also diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I wouldn't call them ex. I wouldn't call myself an expert. Let me say that. But I have some skin in the game. Uh, but we do have some folk who are um, uh, who are kind of up 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 to date around the sort of current literature as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion, gender pronouns, religious. Um, issues and all of those sorts of things. Um, and so we are actually still building that out. Um, we're doing some sort of vetting and I'm doing some, again, actively listening and trying to figure out kind of where people are, are sort of entering into the work and finding points of synergy. So all of that is indeed coming and we will make this opportunity available for the entire community. Thank you. Yep. That's awesome. We'd love to have you back for bias training. We should totally get coffee. I'm uh, back in town. Uh, Middle and middle of next month after visiting some family here on the islands, and I would love to love, would love to get together. Let's do it. All right. Are there any other questions for uh, Jason, or do we want to go ahead and move forward with our next item? Just to make sure that everyone has had an opportunity to participate. Hearing Keith. none. Oh, oh, Jimmy, was... oh Keith, Keith, sorry. <laughs> I was just going to shout you out, Keith. <laughs> oh, thank you. I was just going to say if uh, we could have city staff send uh, Jason's contact info. So if people wanted to reach out to me to have a talk, that would be awesome. That is excellent. Yes. I was going to say, I'll just stalk you on the LB website, find you. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's awesome. awesome. 
Thank, Thank you, you all again. And 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 before I, I sort of dash off, I really I don't even have the words to express my sincere gratitude to Keith. Oh my word, you all! Pride was and happy pride, everybody. Okay, pride was phenomenal. Keith, oh my word, and the whole planning, the whole planning committee and the team, it was amazing. And that was just indeed my honor to be one of many dynamic speakers. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, and so I just wanted to give Keith and everyone listening to this, everyone here today, just huge love and shout out um, for a successful, I think one of the best pride events that I've ever attended. And I've attended quite a few prides, like all over the nation, but this is one for the book. So thank you, Keith, and happy pride. And thank you all so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us, Jason. And yes, I saw that. I know we're going to go to like have that have a moment to just celebrate and discuss discuss that. I know it's not an official HRC event, um, but oh my gosh, all the pictures I had the ultimate FOMO. Wanted to be back in Oregon. Thank you yes. for I was, thank you for saving me a shirt. I was like, I got a Venmo him, got a set of money. Um, it looked incredible. Yes, Such thank you, and thank you, J Jason, for joining us to speak. It was awesome speech i told you this already but it was really good and i got a lot of people really really moved and it was fun to march along with you and our other friends and neighbors it was great favorite event obviously yes highlight thank you okay all. so the next time on, our, on next time on our agenda is discussing the mural for the albany public library sure and so um just wanted to touch base as there's a lot of communication and I wanna thank this group as well um, as the Arts Commission as uh, through hookups through people and Javier, excuse me, um, there are two Latinx uh, student artists that are potentially meeting with Millie to help with the design. So it's moving forward, excuse me, she still doesn't have a timeline, um, but I think it's a great collaboration and I'm super excited that this group was able to, to help find some artists. So uh, keep you posted as it continues, but good news. Excellent, thank you so much. All right, so let's go ahead and move forward with the um, HRC product, uh, product project updates. Uh, who would like to go first? Okay, well, since not everyone's jumping all at once. Um, so mine kind of on hold while I'm out of town, uh, but once I get back, I'm, I'm back like seventh-ish. Uh, I'm planning on starting back up, so I need to get an email out to my subcommittee uh, before the end of this week to get some, some themes planned. So heads up to folks. Uh, so I'll be sending out an email over to Keith, and I believe, Greg, you were also on my subcommittee, and Robin. Or is it just Keith and Robin? I'll check my papers. And uh, anyone else have anything to update? any projects they'd like to work on? I haven't not yet gotten with Jamie. I, work has been crazy, but we are going to do that. And I think it's a worthy project to go out and promote um, diversity through our city uh, food venues. So we're gonna have to, uh, to pick it up there. So that's, that's my only update on that. I do have something else I would like to propose, but I think that's another section of the agenda. Yeah, that would be probably uh, in business from the, well, if, is it for a HRC project? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, okay, yeah, good. we'll get that from business from the commission uh, later on in the agenda. Okay. All right, anything else going on or do we move forward with our next item on our agenda? Just kind of to clarify, which projects are doing, who's doing what? Because I know at so, one point I was doing something with food. So it looks like maybe other people are doing something else with food. So I'm just trying to figure out who's doing what. I don't think anyone else is doing anything with food. I think it was just you. I we were planning on doing that food truck or? Yeah. yeah I think we were going to combine um, mm -hmm. our efforts there, Miriam, yeah. to try to, uh, for the three of us to work, to help okay. you work on that and to help have you help us address the other thing at the same time. Yeah, I think that's what I remember. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I, I mean, I was absent um, last month, 
um, due to my son being sick. So that's why I was like, oh my God, I've been out of the loop. Um, and so, but you guys have my phone number, right? Jamie and Robin, you guys have my number? If not, mm-hmm. I'll, uh, okay. So we can start talking about that um, and maybe start setting up some dates and we can talk about it and get that started um, for next time. So yeah. I think that would be kind of my update on that is I'm going to get with Robin and Jamie. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I was wondering if anyone knew what was going on with Festival Latino this year, if anyone had heard anything. I haven't heard anything, and I tried to reach out to a few folks. So Yeah, I haven't you know, heard anything. I actually um, was just, my friend Audrey Carl reached out to me about it, and uh, I'm, that's been on my, on my mission. She reached out to me yesterday and was like, hey, you know, what's going on with Festival Latino? Uh, I'm going to reach out to uh, some new organizers. Yeah, it should be someone. I think was it uh, Hack that took that on? Yeah, uh, Hack and and some other folks. Um, usually it's in September, so yeah, we have some time if we want to try yeah. to figure it out. Yeah, but I still haven't heard anything. Usually the planning starts in the summer to yeah. get all the vendors and everybody involved. So I haven't. I haven't been able to attend one of the hack meetings, so I, I'm not on the loop, but I, I do know some folks that work like are part of that initiative. So I could ask around too on that. Um, yeah. Awesome. So whoever finds out information, let's send it to Kim and she can disperse it to everyone else on the commission. So we can stay in the loop and see how we can plug in and get involved. So kind of the perfect segue for future events and also event debriefs. So it sounds like a lot of folks into pride um, and had a lot of fun and I'm, so severely jealous and congrats to Keith hats off um but is there any, anything everyone would like to share or anything um for other events or anything else coming up not that I know of nothing yet um I did want to just take a moment and thank all the city staff that helped make pride so successful I could not have done it so easily and everything go off without no problems and any problems that came up, we got, we all worked through it together as a group. So I'm just so thankful everyone at city, in the city departments, we had do all parks and rec, we had public works, we had fire department, police department, and everyone was working together and everyone understood the assignment and it just, it went awesome. And I will say the Albany Pride uh, TikTok as well is the best. Oh, or, oh, I haven't Instagram. really done anything with TikTok. Well, and your Instagram, the reels. Oh, yes, Instagram. I get yeah. confused. I'm, I guess I feel like an old lady, but I'm like, I don't know what, what's different. Right, the scrolling <laughs> like, videos. Is it a reel? Is it a TikTok? Um, yes. So yeah, um, we, oh, yes. Oh, oh, I was going to oh, say, no, did, we, did we speak something about talking to the city manager about a diversity uh, inclusion? position at this city did we did you bring something like that to the table i did bring it up and i wanted to meet with uh peter if anyone else wanted to join me to talk about that because i think that'd be a valuable role to bring to our community yeah i was a little been a little busy the last few months but that's definitely something that i want to talk to peter about yeah i was thinking too about that robin if i could join too i would like to be part of that discussion yeah. Um, just because I, I want, I'm a Jedi, so justice, equity, diversion, inclusion leader. So I will really like to put in, you know, hear what others have to say and maybe put a thing or two in there. Yeah. yeah. Not to say the city or anybody's not doing doing good, but it just helps to take some of that weight off everyone. Yeah. All right. So any other future events that are coming up this uh, this summer? All right, hearing none, let's go ahead and move forward with our next item on our agenda, which is the um, event debriefs. I think we should highlight Pride. Um, we should highlight Jason Dorsett being here. Anything else anyone would like to highlight for the annual report? I think the volunteer help for Juneteenth um, is something that hopefully we can continue to build off of. And so Jamie and Greg, thank you both so much for clearing time out. 
yeah, it was great. My daughter asked if we could go back next weekend. Yes, and Juneteenth was really awesome. It was a really good event. And I'm, it rained a little bit, but it wasn't so much that it scared people away, which was nice. It was a warm rain. Right? It's yeah. been a, it was a it was really wet, wet spring, really. Or, spring, Oregon so. sunshine. Yes. yes. Okay. So, all right. So I'll also highlight Juneteenth in our annual report. Okay, so then uh, next item on the agenda or is business from the commission. Robin, you mentioned you had something. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. So I was wondering with um, the turn of events and the issue uh, that we've seen nationally here, the issue of acting um, or, or, you know, thinking globally, acting locally sort of thing, could, would it be our, our, our position to request that the city council vote on a resolution supporting uh, women's re reproductive rights uh, and have them, have the council people take a stand uh, or publicly take a stand on record for that. I think that would be really cool. Kim, were you gonna say something? But, so I'm, I'm not sure if it would, because citywide we don't, city council and I don't, I'm just trying to think like how, how they could, since they, they are the ones that make the, those kinds of laws or. Um, well, I think it's a, it's it would be more of a resolution in support of the state's efforts, not only to combat any federal efforts that would thwart state law. And we know those are coming because we've seen that in the justices um, opinions. Uh, and, 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 and I think it's, it's good time to ask local government to chime in and say whether they, uh, the, which side of that, uh, the, the, what side of democracy they stand on. I, so this would be, you know, uh, proclamations are read, um, for like honorary months. Part of me wonders if there's any language out there that's being provided by any of, um, the advocacy groups, um, that maybe we that the HRC could submit to say, here's some sample language. Is this something that the council would um, consider? And the mayor is typically the person who um, gets the first look, I believe, at, at those types of proclamations. And then it kind of goes from there. So um, I, I- I'd be happy to do some research yeah. to, see, to see what other cities have done in that regard in the last you know, week. I'm sure that's happened, you know, um, but uh, find out what other uh, like resolutions other cities might have, may have done. Yeah, I would definitely look into it and keep myself um, and Matt, I'll talk about Matt in a minute, um, posted as we'll be able to help spread it to the appropriate folks and um, let them know that this would be a recommendation from the HRC and something that would be meaningful. Okay. I guess that's um, a great idea. Yeah, I is, that, is that something to add? Okay, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, just from like a public health standpoint, I think that's something that would be appropriate for them to acknowledge for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> so right, I have sir. something. Oh, from... go ahead, Miriam. Okay, yeah. So um, I was wondering about one thing that I said that um, Corvallis is doing, um, and I was thinking of maybe we could kind of do it here as well but do kind of a like I want to see what people think Albany is going to be in 20 to 40 years what do they want to see the change in Albany um, I know um, Corvallis is doing the I can that imagine Corvallis where they ask the community um, they're doing the efforts to really get in tune with where do you see Corvallis in 20 years and 40 years how are we going to accomplish that and I really feel like we should in Albany be able to do that as well because it's so important to have the community's input on you live here what do you want to see in 20 years and 40 years here um, and I'm the reason why I ask is because I'm also part of those efforts and I really want to see those efforts here because I live here um, and I want to hear from the community so is there a way that we can either approach either the city council or in a way where we can create kind of like an advisory um, board or be part of HRC and have like a committee where we can work on those efforts. And I see Kim raising her hand. 
And actually, um, we're going through a strategic plan process right now, and Matt's actually done quite a bit of um, survey work and, okay. and some outreach to get those answers, those questions answered. Um, Matt, I'm going to put you on the spot. I was going to talk to you uh, about you during staff updates, but Matt is going to be the new liaison for HRC while I am out on maternity leave, oh. and he's amazing, and he tuned in tonight. So, um, and he's just fabulous, and he supports HRC left and right. So, um, Matt, do you want to talk at all about the strategic um, plan outreach that's been going on? Sure. Um, so, uh, I don't know how familiar you guys all are about uh, Albany's history with strategic planning, but um, uh, the first effort goes back to 2005. Um, and over that time, we've done several uh, versions, uh, updates, um, but uh, we had a little bit of a hiatus with COVID. Um, at like many things. And so um, we're getting back into the routine, especially with this relatively new council of um, updating our strategic plan, which is now, I believe, four years out of date. So um, part of restarting that engine um, is engaging with our, our consultant that we've been working with for about a little over a year now, but um, one of those uh, items was to do a community survey. And um, that was sent out, I can't remember exactly, several months ago. Um, and we got a, a fair amount of responses, not on the level of our community survey that you may have participated in last fall, um, or no, that was, no, it's even longer ago than that. Anyway, um, which was a more scientific survey that had postcards sent out to randomly drawn uh, addresses uh, in the city. So um, that, the results of that survey, the community-wide survey, um, which I believe was sent to 4,500 uh, addresses, um, uh, as well as this more recent survey were both used um, by our consultant uh, in formulating kind of the information for this latest update for the strategic plan. Um, that said, uh, I think there's more opportunities for surveying um, in the future. And Miriam, um, one of the things we've struggled with is that uh, in taking a look at our now out of date strategic plan, we're kind of grappling with um, the, uh, the current plan has become kind of a catch all. It, it has operational plan stuff in it. It has um, kind of near term strategic plan, like five years. And then, you know, some of the stuff you're talking about with Corvallis or um, uh, many other jurisdictions that do these like really long range, like, you know, 2030, which isn't really that far away now, um, <laughs> but 2040, 2050, 2060 kind of um, long range planning. Um, and I think we'll get there. Uh, like anything, it's a, it's a process that we just need to keep working at. And right now it's, a pretty big struggle to just get the machine moving again with this current council. So, um, but it is is something that we're taking a look at, and maybe there's an opportunity to um, do some surveying that maybe not for this round of strategic planning, but like with an eye toward the next iteration. So, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that <laughs> just I think it's so important that we get the community involved. And I'm curious to hear how those modes of communication regarding those surveys um, have come up, you know, cause it's so important to get all 
um, levels and all different communities to be able to answer those surveys. So a lot of my questions would be yeah. along the signs where was it in multiple languages? How was the accessibility? Um, was it also yeah. in written form? Was there someone with a clipboard asking those questions? Because maybe someone is not able to read or, you know, that's why, like for me, that level of accessibility to those surveys um, you know, maybe that's why a lot of people don't fill them out um, sure. because of that level of access. So that's why, like, I like the initiative that Corvallis is doing because they are adding things to Corvallis that makes it into the city that it is currently very welcoming, very, um, you know, community based. They want the community to feel welcome. And so I really want to incorporate and kind of bring that sense of belonging into Albany because I do believe those are awesome efforts to do to have that sense of community here. Not that we don't have it, but to really have everybody's input on what they want to see in Albany. So that's why like, I understand the strategic plan that we're playing catch up instead of looking ahead. And I can see that as a barrier and I understand that. I just want that idea to be in the council and, and think, look, we can't just focus in five years and we can't be playing catch up we got to look further ahead. And so what can we do as HRC to have those conversations? Because it's important for future generations, for my kids, for everyone, where we want to see Albany in 20, 40 years. Um, and so that's kind of the question I'm bringing forth is as HRC, what can we do to push this to the city council to be able to make it happen and not play catch up? Well, it sounds like it is happening, and um, Matt, it'd be interesting. I'd be interested to hear like how you know Corvallis did, did when when I had doing this. You know, maybe maybe they like we don't know exactly how their processes unless Miriam, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you do, like if they were using yeah. clipboards or how they were going about getting information. Uh, so it'd be interesting for us to like you know learn from their experience mm -hmm. and learn from maybe some mistakes that they made, and we can make Albany's better. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, they have they have a, an advisory board within an advisory board that is focusing on the engagement. So not only do they have this um, advisory board, they also have within that other umbrellas that are underneath that fall to help make it to have communication, engagement, outreach, you know, all of those aspects. And so it's not just one advisory. It's like it, it's many components. And that's really what I like about it. And that's how you get different community members involved in these conversations. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to see in, in Albany. And that's why, like, this is a conversation that needs to be brought up to the city council about the future of Albany, um, because ultimately they're the ones that are going to appoint um, those individuals into those advisory council, but there's needs to be a not just strategic plan, but something that is going to make it happen. Um, because it, again, it's and I'm more than happy to you know share what I have been doing and 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 really, you know, we're. I just want to see Albany, a place where, in 20, 40 years, I still want to be here, if that makes sense. So, Miriam, what I, I oh, sorry. Um, when I heard your question, my first thought was like, what if we did a time capsule? Like have kids write, write have like a contest with the schools and have kids mm -hmm. write, you know, their ideas and then mm -hmm. do a time capsule. I love that. I think that would be perfect to open in 20 or 40 years and be like, hmm, we went back in time. <laughs> like way back in time um I think that would be great yeah um I think that would be really cool and something we could even talk to again bring up to the city council right I'd be like hey maybe this is something you guys can put it out there what do you guys think support um but I really that's kind of like where I wanted to go to also another thing that I wanted to like put out there is I would like Albany to have a splash pond, like an area for kids to splash, you know, especially during this heat. That I mean, I don't want to go to Corvallis and enjoy their awesome things they have over there. I want to have great, it here. Great news. That's in the waterfront so, project. It is. I was going to say. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be by the carousel. So, so uh, construction on that project is expected to begin in the spring of next year. Okay. So maybe by next summer, uh, kids will be playing in a yes. splash pad. Because and I have to go to Corvallis, okay? <laughs> shameless plug. 
shameless plug for our department, reach out to your city councilors and get your neighbors to step up and do the same thing and say that we value this types of recreation yeah. and money needs to go towards it. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, yep. shameless. Well, yes. and, and I was going to add along those lines, uh, Miriam, that um, in terms of engagement efforts and um, uh, uh, DEI and mm -hmm. all the all these initiatives that you want to see the city move forward on, um, those, no matter uh, how many times you have to say it, you have to tell city council and keep pounding them um, that these are the things that mm -hmm. Albany wants. And so, um, yeah, I would just kind of encourage that. Mm -hmm. And and really, you know, our efforts in, um, uh engagement and communications all come down to resources mm -hmm. um and you know if we can we can leverage uh help from the hrc you know in terms of talking about people with clipboards um then great that's that's a great way to solve that problem um because unfortunately i i don't know how much how successful we are going to be at hiring full-time staff mm -hmm. um you will but I would also caveat that with we are headed into budget season and so now is the time to mm -hmm. start talking about those sort of requests um if that's even remotely a possibility mm -hmm. now is the perfect time to do that yeah so well i would love to if you could tell me how i can be the yeah. squeaky wheel with yeah. the city council i will totally sign up for that so <laughs> If unfortunately just, there's no no one answer to that so. i know it's just like you just like tell me okay these are a the couple things so you could do i will go to, to do that my advice would be, go, be to go to the city council and okay. speak as a member from hrc or as a member from the public and okay. you know you have your two minutes you can bring um issues or, or resources you want to see uh brought to the city perfect yep. that's the info i needed to know Excellent. I would say also, um, uh, we did actually get uh, a lot of insight into what uh, the future of Albany wanted or wants for the future of Albany um, from this last uh, uh, If I Were Mayor contest that we participated in. Um, we didn't really know what to expect going in, but those kids have clear ideas about what they want to see in their community. And um, it, uh, I don't know how the best way to put this, it varies drastically from the um, spending that we currently do in the city's budget. So um, on the types of priorities that those kids have. So anyway, um, but their communities sound really awesome and great places to live. So Heck yeah, I um, live there. Heck. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other business from the commission? What? Hearing none, let's go ahead and move forward with staff updates. Which I believe Kim, you kind of already gave us a little bit of an update. Yep. So the, the big one is Matt, um, which he typically probably at least half a dozen times at each meeting, I say, I'll connect with Matt on that. And so when I was looking um, to see if there was anybody interested, I am so thankful for him for being like, yeah, let's, let's do HRC. So um, uh, still let me back at the end of maternity leave because I really like this group, um, but he's gonna be your go-to for July, August, and potentially September, depending on how things go. So, um, so thank you, Matt, for hanging out and um, for just being an advocate and, and you're already essentially a member of the HRC with, without even signing on as a liaison. So, um, which leads me to my second thing. I sent out an email as Matt designed a button. So if we're ever out in the community representing for volunteering or anything like that, they're up at the front desk. Um, he designed it. I got to actually stamp them using the button maker and it was very gratifying. So, um, if you're looking for an HRC button, there's no, there's no, uh, pressure, but they're available up there. Just stop by the Parks and Rec counter and pick it up. And then the last thing is HRC awards. So we had said that we wanted to start maybe pushing the information in July and August for the next award cycle. 
uh, knowing that end of October, Halloween, they're due. November, we vote. December, there would be an award presentation. So just want to check in to see if that is still a timeline that works for folks. And if so, I'll work with Matt and we'll re-fire up the, the machine that is uh, actually, I think it I don't think it's still live, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out and get that process going if this is what the group wants to do. All right, that's all the, that's all the updates I have. Awesome, I think that sounds great as far as timeline. So it'd be awesome, let's go ahead and get that, get that moving. All right, so um, our next meeting will be July 26th and um, we'll, we'll be sure to email Gina two weeks in advance if we'll be there in person or remote. And uh, all righty then, without anything else, I'll go ahead and call this meeting adjourned at 4.52 p.m. Oh, sorry, 7.52 p.m. <laughs> sorry, looking at Mike. <laughs> yes, and let's all wish Kim uh, good luck. Yes. It doesn't good. sound like we'll be seeing her at the next I'm going to drop off. Good luck, uh, Kim. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. I'll keep you posted. So yes, I won't we be. We want to see pictures of the baby. Will do. I will not be as well put together as Jamie has been over the last three months just having a baby. I don't know how you do it. You will not see my face on this camera until I have emerged from the cocoon. So, um, well, I think back all... far enough that you can't see the giant bag <laughs> in my eyes from sleeping four hours a night. You're a rock star, Jamie. So, and heck, Stephanie did it less than a year ago. So, um, yeah. strong women. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, I, yes, I believe in you. Yes. We got this. Happy Fourth of July, folks, and we'll we'll see yes. you soon. Have a great Happy one. Four. Bye. 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 Bye.